Good evening. Thank you for joining us again for our midweek devotional time. Uh, tonight I would like for us to turn to John chapter 6, uh, verse 37 through 40. John chapter 6, verse 37 through 40. Uh, I think this is one of the most profound passages in the Bible. Um, th these short little verses right here, I think I researched someone said they, they only contained 110 words. 98 of those words are just one-syllable words. 11 have two-syllable words, and only one word is a three-syllable word. So this is a short verse, short words, but it is packed with confidence. So let's pray as we continue now. Holy Spirit, I just ask that, again, you open our minds to receive Jesus' usage of this simple language that even small children can grasp the very heart of his message. These words speak of confidence, and I think that we certainly could use confidence tonight. Is it confidence in the doctors, in the hospital staff? Is it in the government? Father, you use all of these areas to bring about your will. But we truly know that, that our confidence comes from Jesus as he leads us to the most important road, to the most important place, and that is to heaven. May we hear his words tonight. By Jesus and from Jesus we pray. Amen. So this, this passage of scripture from John begins with the Savior's gift that the Father had given him. So look at uh, John chapter 6, verse 37. We'll look at the first part of verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. And you hear that, that confidence, that reassurance, that society's going to throw us away, society's going to have ups and downs, and what's popular and, and what's faddish. Jesus says, you come and I'll not cast you out. He has declared his identity to, to these Jews in these verses leading up to verse 37. I am and, and who he's telling us. Uh, he declared himself to be the, the, the bread of life. And that was a significant illustration that he used uh, in these days and times. They didn't have the grocery store to run to and and refrigerate food and last for days and days. No, in these days it was from meal to meal to meal of how they they made it. And Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. You come to me, you won't be hungry spiritually anymore. So many times they took him literally, but he was talking about the most important part of our life is our spiritual part. So he, he tells everyone very clearly that, that those who receive him by faith, that they will never, never be cast out. And verse 37 says, the first part there, that the Father's gift to the Son. Now th this gift to Jesus is what you might say a, a reward, uh, a blessing for all that he had to suffer on our behalf. So, so notice the character. Let, let's break this first part of verse 37 down. All that the Father giveth me. All that the Father giveth me. Now, you know, we, we may think of money or clothing or, or shelter or food, things of that sort, but listen to the character of the gift as Jesus describes it. It's, it's in the little three-letter word, all. That word encompasses within every sinner who, who wants to be saved. It doesn't matter who we are. All people, Jesus includes. So if we are saved, and just think about this. If, if you and I are saved, we are God's gift to the Son. You ever thought about that? That if you're a believer in Jesus Christ... You're God's gift. I'm God's gift. And that ought to adjust our attitudes a little bit. Just how, how am I responding? How am I conducting myself? 
How do others know that I'm the gift of the Father to the Son for all that he suffered on my behalf through all of the sins? Now, the consequences of this gift. Look at again the wind, the three little words in here. All shall and come. You know, whether we accept it or not, we come to Jesus because he first came to us. It's, it's nothing that we do on our own. It's nothing that we, we take the initiative to start it. Jesus came to us. And, and God makes this universal offer of salvation to all people, to Southern Baptists, to Muslims, to Methodists, Presbyterians, Hair Christians, Hindus. It's all to everyone, all people. And he speaks about whosoever will. Whosoever will, anyone who will come to Jesus will be saved. And I, I think this is a simple passage that we could, we could put in our hearts and, and learn to share with, with one another. We don't have to think about what to say. Jesus has, has already said. In, in this Bible, it's, it's red-lettered. Just, just say the words that Jesus has said. Those who will come, whosoever will come, I'm not going to cast you out. I'm not going to drop you. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm not going to throw you away once I'm done with you. You will always be with me. But those who will not come to Jesus will never be saved. That's, that, that's what the Bible says. That's the consequence of not believing. That if we do not come, then we, we will never be saved. In these verses, it's... I think it's just brimming to the very top, to the very lip of, of confidence. Jesus knew that God had given him us. Jesus knew that. It, it, it wasn't a, a big surprise. It didn't catch Jesus off guard. If anything ever caught Jesus off guard, then he wouldn't be the Lord. He knows already what's taking place. And so because he, he suffered and died and rose again victoriously, you and I are, are his sheep. And, and Jesus could face, I believe, the rejection there on the cross, dying and all that agony and all that pain because he knew it wasn't going to be in vain. He knew the final outcome. He knew what was coming. He would, he'd save every person that the Father had given him through faith by his death and resurrection. You and I have faith in this death and resurrection, then Jesus knows he did not die in vain. So let's think now a minute about the, the, Savior's, the Savior's grace here. Jesus, again, look at the verses. Jesus had, had confidence because it was the Father's gift of redeemed people. It wasn't monetary value. It wasn't anything that you could, you could hold on to and grab on to. No, no, it's, it's redeemed people. We can all have confidence because of the Savior's grace. Regardless of who we are, of what we've done, what we've experienced, what we've put other people through, when we ask for forgiveness and we turn away, we repent, we, we turn away from acting the way we act. Can't keep acting the same way. Because if we keep acting the same old way, then that really means we haven't truly asked for forgiveness that we, forgiveness is, I'm sorry, and I'll not do that again by your power. So look at verse 37 again. It says, him that cometh to me, that, that cometh to me, it, that's an essential part of verse 37. It declares the, the way of salvation. The way has been provided. The way has been determined by God at the very foundations of the earth. The essential part is that you and I get to choose to come. Faith is a choice. If we want to have confidence, it's going to be in Jesus. Beloved, being saved is not about joining a church or being a better person. Uh, it's not about stop sinning. It's, it's not about doing good. It's, it's not about depending on our political system. And, and I keep saying that because so many of us, I believe, got so wrapped up in this presidential election 
And if it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, how, how rejected you feel, how scared you are, how you worry about how things might happen, how you feel like you've been cheated on and turned away. Being saved, being saved is about coming to Jesus Christ. If you want confidence, it's not going to be in your fellow mankind. It's going to be in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And one way that we show that we have that personal relationship is the way we treat our fellow man, the way we help one another for them to come to know Jesus. All we have to do is to look to Jesus by faith and trust in him, and his death and resurrection is sufficient. That's it. That's all we need. We are saved, says Romans 10, verse 9. Now, here comes the energy, the energy of his grace. Still in verse 37, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus promised all of those who hear his words, his call from God and come to him, nobody's going to be turned away. Nobody's going to be turned away. Look at the word cast out. You see that? That has the idea of, of driving someone away. But see, we with confidence, we lost sinners need never fear that we're going to be cast out, that we're going to be driven away. Jesus will not drive us away by no means. He gave his life. He resurrected from the dead. He was he was in that new body, that glorified body that believers are going to get to share in one day. Jesus opens the door for any person, any race, any place, any background to come to him. Isn't that confidence? You know, uh, in any presidential election, when a new president is elected, he chooses people to be his advisors, his advisors his cabinet members. And it's usually people who, who were there with him, who helped him, who, who he liked, who he chooses. Not, not so with, with Jesus. Anyone, anywhere, anytime, any background can come. Beloved, we have a Savior that gives us confidence. Jeremiah felt that way in Lam Lamentation chapter 3. Verse 22 and 23, Lamentations, Jeremiah's lamenting over the sins of the people and, and the Lord having to, to discipline them. But he saw one ray of hope in all of that sin and all of that sorrow that God's compassion never fails. That's what we need to remember from Lamentation chapter 3. God's, God's compassion never fails. See, compassion, remember we talked about that earlier during covid uh, in our restrictions that we're having to meet like this. Compassion is love in action. Compassion is love in action. God's compassion is, is greater than any sin that you and I could ever participate in. He, he promises us to be forgiven. And Jeremiah knew that God's faithfulness, that, that God had, had promised that the punishment would, would follow disobedience, and, and it did, but all the people had to do was, was to lean upon him and, and to come back to him. Now, if we want the compassion of, of God, God's love in us, we don't want to keep acting the same ways that, that we've been acting. We don't have to. That's a choice. We can choose to come or we can choose to keep acting and doing and participating. The places that you and I go, is that acting like a gift to Jesus? The things that we do in the privacy of our own home or, or when we're with our families in a social setting, the acts that we participate in, is that acting like a gift to Jesus? Beloved, trusting God's faithfulness day by day gives us the confidence. We don't need any other stimulants. We have the confidence that Jesus is our great our great redeemer, our great includer. Our hymn writer said, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Great is the Lord's faithfulness unto us. Unto us. That doesn't give us a right to sin. 
That should bring us to our knees and say, I want to be their gift. I want to be the gift of your faithfulness. Because the truth is every lost sinner, every lost sinner is dead. And no, no one is worse than another. A lost church member is just as lost as a drunkard or a drug addict, uh, a prostitute, any kind of category you want to come up with. In our Father's eyes, if we're lost, then we're dead to him. But however, he gives us confidence, does he not, in Christ's promise that no one's going to be cast out. So now look at the guarantee. Here, here's the guarantee, verses 38 through, through 40. For I am come down from heaven. See, we know where Jesus is from. I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Boy, only the Christian faith can have that kind of confidence. Jesus will in no wise cast us out, and Jesus will in the last day raise us up to be with him. Now, verses 39 and 40 are the con confirming his, his plan. Uh, the Father says that he will lose nothing, lose absolutely nothing. That word lose means, be, means in referencing being lost in hell. When Jesus saves souls, and that saved, repentant person will never be lost again. Well, what about people that, that, that give up their salvation? Well, it makes you wonder if they really believed it in the first place. Somebody that's truly saved doesn't want to give it up. You know, you, you just imagine out here on the river, and you have a river accident in the boat, and you're overboard in the river, and someone throws you the, 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 the rope to pull you back in, and you won't let go of that rope. So I think I ought to stay out here and see what happens. Oh, you hold on to that rope and letting them pull you back to, to safety. That's the way it is. When we are saved, we don't want to turn around. We don't want to let go. We want to stay with, with Jesus. And Jesus has declared that not a single one of those he has saved by his grace will ever be lost. Look at verse 40 once again. The phrase, everyone which seeth Jesus, everyone which seeth Jesus and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Let's, let's think about that word see. You, know, you and I don't see Jesus like he was when he was walking on the earth. Does that mean we're not saved? Uh, listen to John Giles' exposition on the Bible. Uh, he says this about seeing. Seeing Christ is not to be understood of a physical sight of Christ or of a mere speculative knowledge of him, but to trust in him for righteousness, life, and happiness. Mankind can, may by nature be blind, our eyes are shut to all of the spiritual good. The Spirit of God opens our blind eyes and illuminates our understanding of Jesus. I totally agree with this exposition here because we have a, we have a, 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 a confirmed wording, promise, uh, syllables, however we want to describe it here, of his promise may may have everlasting life, and I will. You hear in that declaration, I will with confidence. I know I can. I will. I will raise him up in that last day. What a promise. Jesus tells us twice now in verse 39 and 40, all those who trust me are saved in this world and in the world to come. The Bible makes it very clear. Beloved, I, I know that we don't understand this, this COVID-19. You hear doctors say this way. You hear another group say this way. You, you, you hear 
this pharmaceutical company has this cure or that cure. We're never hearing one right way or the one answer for it. Many people have many ideas and many interpretations. Uh, that's what makes the Bible a living book, many ideas and many interpretations. And, and I don't know what the right answer is for COVID. I do know that I have found Jesus Christ in the middle of it, and I'm sure you have too. And that we are going to keep doing these safety protocols as best we can to try to keep everyone safe. Not because we want to follow a government or an individual, but because we want to be the gift to our Lord Jesus Christ and to be honoring to him. The Bible makes it very clear to all of us that we are kept by his power. First Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And I, I want us to do everything that we can to enjoy that power that Jesus has given to us. We are kept by his power, not by our power, not by what we do, not by the safety protocols that we use here at church, by his power we are kept safe. Oh, we may die, and we are all going to die, various reasons, but believers are kept by the power. We're just going to graduate from here to our heavenly home. We're kept by his power. We are promised everlasting life. You know John 3, 16, but also John 5, 24. We are promised uh, eternal life. John chapter 10, 1 John chapter 2. We are promised that will never perish. And when you read about perishing in the Bible, John 3, 16, John chapter 10, verse 28, uh, perishing means to miss heaven. And when you miss heaven, where do you land? In hell. And when we believe in Jesus, when we've asked him to save us and to be the Lord of our lives, we will never perish. We will never go to hell. We will always be on our journey to heaven. And he also says that we're promised that, that we'll not be plucked out of his hand. Nobody, nobody has the power to take us out of Jesus' hands, says John 10, 28 and following. So then what kind of confidence do you have when you're viewing this, this recording? If our lives come to an end, right as you see that this recording end and we pass away in just a moment in the twinkling of an eye. What kind of confidence do we have that we'll be in heaven? I know I'll be there because I believe in Jesus as my Savior and Lord. And I want you to be there with me. I want you to be there with me. And you can be and will be because we have the confidence that Jesus says, come to me and I'll in no wise cast you out. Have you come to Jesus? These verses invite us. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, help us to realize that only faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord will bring us to heaven. And it's only faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord that we'll be raised again. Our dead bodies will come forth from the grave or wherever we've been been buried and we will be united with our glorified bodies in the air with Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Faith in Jesus Christ gives us confidence. And if we want our sins to be forgiven, we must come to Jesus. If we want to be saved by the grace of God, we must come to Jesus. And if we want to have confidence, and we certainly can, Stay with Jesus. Stay with him, I pray. In his name now, amen. I look forward to seeing you next time, and I hope you'll be with us uh, as we begin our Christmas celebration and Advent wreaths and hanging of the greens. God bless you, and may you remember we're all a gift to Jesus. Thank you.